Hey what's up, this is Juan, and today I'll be doing my Nexus 5 4 months later video, so let's get started. When the Nexus 5 came out, it received a lot of praise, and rightfully so, as it pretty much came with the best of everything. A Qualcomm Quad-Core Snapdragon 800 and an Adreno 330 graphics processing unit was coupled with 2 gigs of RAM, making this an incredibly snappy device. It had a 5-inch 1080p display and an 8-megapixel optically stabilized camera. People were surprised at this as it had a very low price point, with the 16 gigabyte model starting at $349, making this one of the best bang for your buck smartphones out there. Being made of plastic, the LG Nexus 5 was first criticized for being less premium than the previous Nexus 4, but then people took a step back and thought about it and realized that the plastic was a good thing more than a bad thing, as the Nexus 4 was highly criticized for being too fragile. Now, with the plastic back of the Nexus 5, this is definitely not a problem. Also, the Nexus 4 was quite slippery in the hand, and if you try to maneuver around it, it would probably fall. But now with the Nexus 5's more grippy, soft touch back, this phone is easy to maneuver in one hand with plenty of grip. Something that remains just as vibrant as when I first took it out of the box is this display. At 5 inches and a 1920 by 1080p resolution, it came in at a pixel density of 445 ppi. Now, this display was a great performer with nice viewing angles and nice saturation levels as well. And while I'm not usually not looking at my phone from an angle or by a side, if you are, this display has got you covered as it has some of the ni nicest viewing angles that you can ever get. The Nexus 5 continues to be one of the most responsive devices out there as it barely experiences app crashes or lags or stutter. So my device is still as snappy as when I first unboxed it and I'm sure other Nexus 5 users feel the same. A big part of that is probably due to its hardware with the Snapdragon 800 and 2GB of RAM, along with Android KitKat's lower system requirements. This makes an incredibly smooth and snappy device. Speaking of the Nexus 5 software, KitKat has gotten two improvements making it 4.4.2. Mostly these improvements go to the camera, which makes the pictures you take on it more true to life and the in-between shot time is a lot faster. Speaking of that camera, it's not a bad shooter at 8 megapixels, especially with that optical image stabilization. It's just not the best, as it's very inconsistent actually. Um, sometimes you'll get a, a very good shot with nice color production and nice saturation, and other times you get a very washed out shot with the uh, saturation being way out there, and it just doesn't look good at all. But it still gets some points for being able to take nice shots, it's just very inconsistent with it. A thing that's been criticized very harshly on the Nexus 5 is the speaker. While it's not a bad speaker, it's not the best. It definitely can't compete with beasts like the HTC One Max or just HTC One. But the speaker, like I said, isn't the worst. It's just not the best. I mean, the audio quality is kind of tinny. And it just provides kind of wretched sound, but it's better than some other phones out there like the Nexus 4. What I have on the Google Nexus 5 is actually pretty exceptional as I can easily make it a full day of use on this battery. I, e I can easily make 11 hours to 17 hours with 2 and hours to 5 hours of screen on time respectively. But you'll be pretty hard pressed to get through a day and a half here, but if you're just one of those people who just likes to make it through a day on their phones, you'll be very satisfied. Call quality on the Google Nexus 5 is very exceptional with voices coming in nice and clear on my end and callers also said that my voice came in crisp on their end so call quality is exceptional and reception is actually quite nice on the Nexus 5 as I can get LTE almost anywhere I go and that might be due to T-Mobile but the data speeds are very nice. I still recommend buying the Nexus 5 even after four months of release? Of course I do even to a power user or a software enthusiast. It has a great processor with the latest and most stock version of Android, and it all comes at an exceptional price. At $349 for the 16 gigabyte model, you'll be hard pressed to find a better steal than this. If you liked this video or found it helpful, make sure to give it a like, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you wanna see more epic content about Android like this, please subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.